All right, so now we enter into the holy place. So just a short reminder, the Levites are allowed to enter the courtyard. All the Levites are if they have any work. But in here, only the priests have duties. Only the priests can enter here. And only the Holy of Holies, only the High Priest can enter, and only once a year on the Day of Atonement. We'll talk about that later. So first of all, let's begin with the Menorah. The Menorah was made out of gold, and it does not have any cubits on it. So we actually don't know exactly how big it was. It's a little bit difficult to say. Uh, we know that it uh, had one center branch, one center stem. It had three branches off of either side. It was decorated with a flower and an almond as a decoration, as a design on the branches. And it had seven oil lamps on the top giving light. This is the only source of light in the room. The screen that we passed, this was always closed, and there are no doors or windows. Only the menorah is what actually gives light. The menorah was always put against the southern wall. Remember, the tabernacle is always in the same directions. It's always east, west. So right now, we're walking towards the west. When we're leaving, we'll always be walking towards the east. Okay, so menorah gets the south. Directly in front of it, against the north, was the table of showbread. The table was made out of acacia wood. Do you all know what acacia wood is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The desert tree yeah. right around here. Acacia wood covered with gold. And it had 12 breads on it. If you were invited to someone's house for dinner, and the table was set up with 12 plates and 12 cups and 12 forks and knives and 12 chairs around the table, what would you think? What would you assume? That 12 people are welcome. 12 people are invited here for dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Same idea here. This is God's house. This is God's table, and it's set for 12, one portion for every tribe. Right? God made a covenant with all these 12 tribes, turning them into one nation. Right? He makes a covenant with 12 of them. He provides for all 12 of them. That's why the table has 12 portions on it, right? Enough for every tribe is the idea. And the idea over here is that this is a symbol of the communion, the fellowship that exists between God and between the people with which he has a covenant. Right? This, these are his covenant people. This is a representation of the of his covenant people and how he provides for them. So once a week, on Sabbath, on Shabbat, the Saturday, the priests would enter into the holy place and they would eat this bread before God. Okay, so it's a very powerful symbol of eating from the table of God. All right, here you have the altar of incense. The altar was made out of acacia wood. It was covered with gold. It had fire in it. It's an altar, but it's only for burning incense, no sacrifices. But the fire was brought from the altar of sacrifice. The fire itself was from the altar. So they'd bring the fire over here with, with a bowl, and they would put the coals over here. This was for the incense to be lit at least twice a day, every morning and evening. Right? This incense, these ingredients, are only to be used here. No other place and for no other purpose. So whenever you would smell this incense, you're only reminded, really, of one place, of the house of God. Right? Um, the closer you'd be to here, the stronger that smell would be. Right, because you remember most people can't actually enter in here, but you can smell this from the outside, and a little bit connecting you to what's going on in here, reminding you of the place, and kind of getting you into the into the, uh, the right like mindset. That way. Okay, incense is many times used as a comparison to prayer. Right, the prayers of the people to God are the same as that incense. Right, so it says that uh, even in the Book of Psalms, there's a verse that says that the prayers, let my prayers be like an incense unto you. So over here you have the clothing described for the priest and for the high priest. Both the priest and the high priest wore white hats, white tunics, white pants, and colored sashes around their waists. In addition to this clothing, the high priest would also wear a golden band on his forehead that says holy to the Lord or holiness of the Lord. Over his white clothing he wore a blue robe, and on the hem of the blue robe there was a golden bell on the red. Over his upper body, he wore the ephod. Ephod is like a vest. Right? The ephod has the two stones on its shoulders. There were six names onto one stone, and six names onto the other of the children of Israel according to their age, according to their birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 12 names in total. The ephod, the, the vest, is always holding, is always connected to the breastplate, okay, the koshin. The breastplate has 12 stones on it, and there was one name engraved onto every stone. So again, he has 12 here, and he has 12 here. Okay, because he's a representative of the nation of Israel. Right? That's why he's doing this work. Remember, there were sacrifices before there was a tabernacle. People would sacrifice before this was going on. If you remember, even from the very beginning, Cain and Abel would sacrifice. And then later, Noah sacrificed, and Abraham, and Job, and even Moses was sacrificing before there was a tabernacle. But now it's a little bit different, because instead of you just sacrificing for yourself, 
or maybe for your family, you actually bring your sacrifice to the priest, and the priest actually does it on, the, on behalf in the names of all these people. He's a representative of the nation of Israel. He's got help with his work. Remember, the priests are also sacrificing as well. But it's his responsibility. He's the one who carries Israel on his shoulders and on his heart as he's doing this work in their names for them. So once a year, he would enter into the Holy of Holies. That's only on the Day of Atonement on Yom Kippur. Okay. You, you're familiar with the word Yom Kippur? Yes. I use it in English very often as well. It's usually in the Bible, it's actually called Yom Kippurim, which is the plural form of the word atonement. So it's actually called in Hebrew the Day of Atonements. On that day, there are many sacrifices, many atonements. But he enters into the Holy of Holies of Blood from only two of those sacrifices. One of them was for, the, was for whose sins? The high priest. Before he does anything for anybody else, the sin sacrifice actually goes to him. The Bible makes it very clear that every prophet, every priest, every king, they also have sin as well. They're still people. They might have these positions that God gives them, but they're all, before God, they're all still sinners. So the high priest first has to have atonement for himself, and then he takes atonement for the sins of Israel. So both of these bloods, one for him, one for Israel, both of these were taken into the Holy of Holies. But before he can enter, before he goes inside, he first has to light incense, so he takes from the fire, he takes two handfuls of incense and he lights it inside the Holy of Holies so the room fills with smoke before he goes inside. And then he would change into his white clothing because he wears this every day of the year, including on the Day of Atonement, but not when he's inside. So before going inside, he first has to change to completely white and then he would enter. All right? So we'll actually continue from that point inside. All right. All right.